Hello and welcome to Source Card. In this video, we'll talk about creating hatches and gradients in BricsCAD. So, let's get started. So I'll use these sample drawings and I actually have three sample drawings here, hatch sample, associative hatch type and gradient. You can download all these files using link in the description. So I'll use these sample files for creating the hatch and gradients and I'm as you can see using the latest version of BricsCAD. So BricsCAD has rolled out the latest version with this dark background, dark theme background which is soothing for the eye and also a lot of enhanced features are now available in this. But let's go over the hatch and gradient tool for now. Maybe we'll discuss all those enhanced features in another video. So to start the hatch tool, you need to go to the hatch tool on the draw panel. So right here we have the hatch tool, just click on it. And this will start the hatch and gradient window that looks like this. Now in this window, we have two tabs, a hatch tab and a gradient tab. So basically you can start a hatch tool or you can go to gradient to start the gradient tool and then go to hatch. So in this case, we'll start with hatch. Now the first panel here is for the pattern and in this case you can change the pattern type from this panel. So the type is predefined but if you have your own custom hatch types you can select custom and the custom hatch patterns will load up or you can load your own custom hatch pattern but in this case we'll use the predefined ones. Now in the predefined currently NC31 is selected but I'll click on this box and this will open all the hatch patterns that we have available for us. Also, we have the preview of hatch visible here in the swatch or you can click on the swatch to just go to that hatch pattern list once again. So from this list, you can select any of these. Just for this example, I'll leave NC31 selected. Now the next option here is for a scale. Currently my scale is set to 7 which is the last scale which I used. So in your case the scale could be 1 or something else that hardly matters. We'll see what this scale is. But before now discussing all the other tools from this hatch panel, let's apply hatches somewhere in the drawing area so that we can see what's going on with the hatches. To do that I'll go to this boundaries panel. And in this panel, we have the first option here for picking the points, which will basically detect the islands and it's going to apply the hatch inside those islands. So I'll click on this box and now we can click in an area. It will just detect the boundaries or you can just call it an island and it's going to apply the hatch pattern just like this. Now I'll press enter. And let's look at one more option here, which is select boundary entities. Now using this option, you can select an entire object and it will just apply the pattern in that object. So I'll select this boundary entity and now I can click on the boundary, for example, this circle. And if this object is made with a polyline, which it is, then we can select this as well. And when we select this, it's going to ignore all the internal objects and it's just going to apply hatch pattern everywhere inside this boundary. So that's the second way of selecting hatch pattern. I'll press enter and look at this. So in this case, it clearly detected the boundaries and it just left this area but in this case it just ignored everything which is inside the boundary because we selected the second option. Now if you want to remove any hatch pattern then you can select the third option remove boundary entity click the boundary and the hatch pattern is now removed from there press enter and we are back here. Okay so now we have our very first hatch pattern in the drawing let's modify it. The first thing that we can modify here is the scale. The scale of this pattern is 7, which is basically the gap between these hatch patterns in this case, in case of NC31. So let's just increase this value to 10 and I'll press tab key and look at this, the gap will increase. You can decrease this number to decrease the gap and so on. Then we have the angle. Currently the angle is zero and zero degree angle means the default angle, which is currently 45 degrees for this hatch pattern. So if I change this angle to 45 and press tab key, the hatch will become completely vertical. So that's how the hatch angle works. I'll change it back to zero and tab key. Now the next option here is color which is basically the hatch color. So you can select any hatch color which you want, for example, yellow for this case, and 
that will apply the hatch color then this is the background color the background of hatch pattern if you want to apply that you can but in this case I'll just leave it to none I don't want any kind of background color for the hatch now let's not discuss all of these properties and now let's move to other properties here we'll also discuss this hatch origin in a moment and also inherit properties in a moment but first let's discuss all these extra properties here now here we have an option called boundary tolerance now boundary tolerance is especially helpful when you have a little bit of gap in your hatch pattern so if I try applying hatch pattern over these areas so uh, well I'm pretty easily able to apply these hatch patterns but if there is some sort of leak or if there is a tiny bit of gap in any kind of hatch pattern then hatch won't be applied and in that case you can specify a tolerance which BricsCAD will ignore or it will automatically apply hatch even when the gap is within that tolerance limit so that's something which you can apply for filling hatch areas where you have tiny bit of gap but in this case all these are pretty good boundaries and they are completely closed so we don't have any issue applying all these hatches everywhere in the drawing so the hatch is created and now you can clearly see that this is our hatch pattern created for this okay now I'll go to hatch again and this time will change some parameters before creating the hatch now the very first thing that we're gonna see here is the hatch origin alright in this case we started hatch randomly and so we ended up with a random kind of hatch but now we'll make a very specific kind of hatch we will actually control the origin of our hatch for that I'll click on swatch and I'll add um, a brick kind of hatch pattern so maybe we can just add this one blocks I'll click OK now I'll apply the hatch pattern in this area so I'll click on pick point in the boundaries and I'll click this area and the hatch seems to be applied but we only have a single line which means the hatch scale is pretty large for this uh, boundary so I'm gonna change the scale to 1 and it's still big so I'll just make it point 0.1 now and that looks about good but maybe we can just make it point 0.2 and that's perfect all right so here's the boundary it's applied here but in this case the hatch is starting from a very random point but if you want to control that specific point from where hatch is starting then you can use the hatch origin option now I'll click on this specified origin option and now I'll click on this box and this time I'll specify the origin so currently it looks like the hatch is starting here but instead of this point I want the hatch to start from this top left corner so I'll select that and now the hatch will start from here so this doesn't mean the hatch will technically start with the very first block here this is the point where the origin of hatch code is so hatches are made with kind of code in which the origin point is defined and now since I select this point this point will become the origin of that hatch pattern you can change this point once again just click on this pick new origin and you can change it to something else for example here if you want to make this point as origin you can click here and the origin is again redefined so that way you can just change the origin of your hatch pattern alright so we have applied this let's change the color of this hatch to green and now we will make separate hatches in this case now before we do that I'm gonna just click on this pick point again I have this hatch pattern here I'll apply this hatch pattern in few more areas I'll apply it here and here so basically we applied hatches in three different areas but we don't want to end up with a single hatch pattern as we got here we want three separate hatches so I'm gonna press enter now and I'll check this option create separate hatches and now I'll show you what difference it will make so I'll click on OK and now we can select three separate hatches so this is the first hatch second hatch and third hatch and we can change its properties separately so we can now control the properties of all these hatch patterns because we created them separately using the checkbox create separate hatches but in this case if you select any hatch pattern it's going to select all the patterns which were created with this hatch so that's the difference between these two hatch patterns now if you want to apply these hatch on a very specific layer then you can do that as well and as you can see i have few layers here for example i have center layer and hidden layer 
So now I'm going to apply hatch pattern on any other layer other than layer zero. For that, I'll go to hatch. And once again, I'll click on swatch and I'll just change the hatch pattern to something this kind of weird. So anchor lock, I'll click OK. And I'll uncheck create separate hatches. Let's make just one hatch. And also here in the layer option, select your layer on which you want to put your hatch. So I'll select hidden layer. And now the hatch will be automatically added on the selected layer. So the hatch will be now added on hidden layer. So with that, I'll click on pick point and let's apply the hatch pattern maybe here and here. All right, and press enter. So that's the pattern which is applied. I'm going to change it to one. The scale is one and here we are. Now, if you want to increase the transparency of this, you can just move the slider to the right and it will now have the transparency. And if you don't want that, you can just move it back to normal, but I'll just leave it at 71. Now let's click OK. And here we are, we have the hatch pattern with a transparency. Now let's look at the last option of this hatch tool and then we'll move to the gradient and associative hatch. So I'll go to hatch again and this time I'll make the hatch with this island option. So let's go to hatch and uh, select any other pattern, maybe uh, NC3 at this time. I'll click OK. All right, now let's apply the hatch pattern here. For that, I'll go to pick point and I'll click this area. And the hatch pattern will be just like this, pretty normal. And in this case, if you look at this specific part, this is the point of interest for us for this example. Now the hatch is applied here, then it will automatically find the boundary in the islands. It will leave that. And if it finds any other boundary or island, it will just add it there as well. So that's how this hatch pattern works. I'll press enter and that's happening because it's now using this nested pattern where it is applying hatch just like this. So this is how the island detection works for this nested example. Now, if I select outer, it will only select the outer hatch pattern. So I've selected outer and now I'm going to click on remove boundary entities and I'll select this boundary and these boundaries as well. Let's just remove hatches from all of these, enter and let's apply the hatch once again. But this time, just look at this. I'm going to select outer here. So I'll click on hatch. I'll click this area and now it will not apply hatch inside these circles. So it will just add it outside and uh, it will just add a single level of hatch. All right. Now the last one is, well, as you can see, it will ignore every other boundary inside the hatch. So I'm going to once again go to remove boundary entity and uh, let's just remove this and uh, these as well. And now let's apply the hatch. So pick point, I'll select this area and it will ignore everything. Now you might be wondering why it's not ignoring these. Well, that's because this is the only boundary which it is now finding. For this, this is the closed loop which is being formed. So that's why it's just finding this thing as a closed loop. And inside this, in case of these circles, we have two loops which are completely inside the boundary. That's not the case with this. We have this object sharing this boundary right here, which is, well, outside the boundary here. So that's basically the case here. And I'll press enter and that's the third island detection option. Now for some reason, if you want to change the hatch pattern after adding it and you want to use any other existing hatch pattern, for example, let's, let's use this hatch pattern with all its properties. If that's the case, then you can use this inherit properties as well. So go to inherit properties, select the hatch pattern that you want to use inside this area. And now you can just apply the hatch pattern that you want. So I'm going to just select this area. Well, here it is. And I'll press enter and the hatch is applied inheriting this property, which includes the transparency as well. So that's how this works. So I'm going to go to remove boundary and I'll just remove this boundary from the hatch right there. All right, that's applied here. And these are the hatch options and that's how you can add hatches. So I'll click OK and here we are. Now let's discuss the associative feature in the hatch pattern and for that I'll go to this associative hatch type. So basically we have two kind of hatch patterns here. So I'll go to this hatch and now the associative option is right here. So in the options panel we have this associative checkbox which we have not yet discussed. So let's 
see this option. For that, I'm going to use NC31 pattern and I'll click pick point and I'll select this area. And we'll apply the hatch pattern right here. Now I'll press enter and I'll make sure associative is checked and I'll click OK. I'll go to this hatch again and this time, as you know, I'll uncheck this associative option and I'll apply the hatch pattern again NC31. So I'll click on pick point, this area and press enter and OK. All right. So in the first example, associative hatch option was checked. In the second, it was not checked. So let's see what the difference is. In this case, in case of associative hatch pattern, if you select the boundary and change the boundary, the hatch will automatically adapt to the change. But in this case, in case of non-associative hatch, the hatch pattern will not adapt to the changes. And the reason is in this case, this hatch pattern has its own boundary. So you can use this boundary to change the hatch shape. So that's why it's not adapting to the changes of the boundary. That's the difference between associative hatch and non-associative hatch. Now, finally, let's look at the gradient tool, which is very much similar to the hatch tool with a slight difference. In this case, you can add colors instead of patterns. So I'll go to hatch tool. Alternatively, you can click on this drop down and select gradient as well. So I'll select hatch. And once again, we have the hatch and gradient tool. So this time I'll go to the gradient tab and we have one color and two colors option. Also, you can see that the rest of the options are pretty much same. So let's start with one color. And when you select one color, you'll have option of selecting only one color and the gradient will transition between black and white, the second gradient. So that's the one color option. You can change the color from here. So just click this box and change it to some other color that you want. So in this case, maybe we'll just choose this color. I'll click OK. And now let's apply the gradient. So I'll just make sure that it's something like this. I'll select the very first one, the linear gradient pattern. And I'll go to pick point and I'll select these points inside this insulator. So randomly I'll select these and now you can see the transition. So it's just added as if we have shadow here and the light is falling on this insulator from this side. So we can add sort of 3D effect using these gradients. Now, if you want to add two colors, then you can select this two color option and you can select second color for this. So that second color can be anything. So maybe this one and here it is. So now the transition won't be between the selected color and black or white. Rather, it will be between these two colors. So I'll just change it to one color once again so that we have the normal gradient. I'll click OK and here we are. So that's our gradient. So as you can see, this gradient can be added just like hatch pattern. The only difference in this case is it's just a color. And in case of hatch pattern as well, so I'm just going to press enter again, which will repeat the hatch tool. It will once again start the hatch tool. And now if you want to add a single color, then you don't need to go to gradient. You can simply go to hatch, select the solid hatch pattern. So here it is selected solid. And if you don't see that, click the swatch and just select the solid hatch pattern. So here it is solid. Select that and now you can select a color. So you can select the color here. So maybe red specifier area. So I'll go to pick point this area, press enter and now we are applying a solid color. There is no transition between colors. So if that's the case, you want to apply a solid color, you can use this hatch pattern. And that was all about adding hatch and gradients in your drawing using PRIXCAD. So I hope you like this video. If you have any question related to this, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to share this video. I'll see you soon in another video.